Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to bring your home network to life inside Home Assistance Floor Plan. And not only will you be able to visualize your entire network at a glance, but you'll also learn how to interact with it quickly and easily. Let's dive in. Awesome, let's do a full walkthrough of the network plan. First thing is the internet, and I have my download and upload sensors that I'm getting from UPnP. I have my public IP that I'm getting from the YAML configuration. I have my uh, ISP managed router from Nokia, which is connected to my first Linksys VELOP router. And I get to click on these uh, because I have created an anchor point in my SVG file, which I'm going to show you later as well. And then I have these control buttons right in the bottom side for my mesh system from VELOP. The first one is guest Wi-Fi, so I can easily turn it on from the dashboard. And next I have the online offline devices. And if I open that, go to the attributes, you can see all my online devices and their IPs. And now my guest Wi-Fi is on. That's awesome. So next one is the parental controls. Right now I have parental controls on for my iPad. Uh, and I'm going to turn it off until that reflects on the uh, mesh system. I have again a speed test functionality from the VELOP system and the last speed test was giving me these numbers and I have the uptimes as well. This is from UPnP integration, however. And <clears throat> lastly, we have a button and you can see the, the parental controls are now completely off from the uh, digital uh, twin. And I have a button. Are you sure you want to reboot the network? Of course, I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, this is a confirmation dialog in the YAML file uh, that you can find. Great. Right. So network integration is a home assistant. I want to talk about a couple of them. The first one would be UPnP integration, which is built into Home Assistant Core simply enable UPnP on your router to have it automatically discovered. You get a bunch of simple sensors to get you started, like this data, download speed, uh, packet, uptime, and so on. The second one I want to talk about is Linksys VELOP. This is a custom integration. This is, of course, my own Wi-Fi mesh system, and yours can be anything really for that matter provided you have an integration for the vendor. But the concept remains the same. Awesome, so this integration gives me this mesh uh, device uh, where I have tons of controls and tons of sensors that I can uh, manipulate and control my entire network at home. Now I want to talk about how do I get my public one IP of course, I, as I mentioned, I do have uh, an issue with my ISP, uh, with their own managed uh, WAN router, so I cannot access it. However, I, I get to do the sensor where I just use a REST API to, uh, to ipfi.org and to get my public IP into another sensor. As you can see here, external IP sensor, uh, it is, only configured via YAML file. Uh, so this is the only way you can uh, do it. Let's identify a device that we're looking for. So let's go, for example, search for HP, which is my tank printer. And yes, HP is taking the IP of 149 from our DHCP server. That's good. So let's copy that name. Let's do an exercise together where we will add a new entity to our network twin. 
So first let's go and find one of our sensors. This is the IP for my B-Link uh, device. Let's copy that somewhere. And then let's go create a new helper template. And then we can create a sensor, paste what we have copied and simply change the name of the device from the online devices that we copied before. In this case, it's our printer, the HP printer. And as you can see, the IP preview already is showing 149, which is the correct private IP address of the printer. Fantastic. So now let's move on into Inkscape and add visually our uh, device or printer. And thanks to Vecteezy, you can find tons of uh, freeware and pro licensed uh, vectors. All right, so I already prepared a new printer here in the layer or the static, which you will find everything in the GitHub repo again. And then for the connections between the elements, you will find these under uh, paths and paths static. You just need to create a pair of these paths as as you can see here, two for printer on top of each other for the CSS animation to uh, look nice. All right, and then we have the label, which is essentially a duplication as well. We just change the ID of the SVG element in the XML uh, editor. And here, let's open the XML editor. Let's make it big. Okay, so here you'll see for example, on my desktop, I have the uh, ID, which is matching the sensor ID on Home Assistant. All we're going to do here is just replace this ID of the printer to call it uh, the proper sensor ID of the printer. So I'm going to copy that from Home Assistant. Let's go to Helpers. Okay, let's search for it. HP, right? So this is the entity ID. Let's copy that and put it here in the ID so that it will be selected uh, by the floor plan. Okay, so to create hyperlinks on your elements, just select the element you want, right click on it, and then create anchor. And then put the link of your router, and the target uh, should be new to open a new browser window instead of replacing your window. And of course, uh, an ID. And the last step, in case you haven't given up already, is to simply just add the newly created sensor in the uh, entities in the YAML file I provided. Again, we are using the Home Assistant uh, config helper extension, uh, which can uh, in real time fetch all the entities from the home assistant so this is our new sensor uh, hp sensor great so let's go back to the dashboard and let's do a refresh and we need to also do a hard reload on chrome so empty cache and hard reload and voila you have the printer and you have the ip mast mapped from the entity and it is looking good.